Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my wrap-up for the month of March. So the first book that I read in the month of March is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas and this was brilliant. I rated it five stars in total absolutely adored this book. I read it as part of one of my themed videos. This time it was me reading three YA contemporary fantasy novels and I think this was my second one after Legendborn and I was so happy to have picked this book because it was absolutely brilliant. We follow Yadriel who is a transgender guy who is part of a family of Prujo. I cannot pronounce that word pr properly, I'm so sorry, but it's basically um, a whole culture of witchcraft, I guess, in uh, Latin communities. So Yadriel decides to prove himself as a brujo and not a bruja, the female uh, witches, because they both have different type of abilities. And to prove that he has been accepted by the, the Lady Death that they pray to as a brujo, he decides to try and find a spirit because uh, I think his cousin disappeared and so he's like I'm gonna prove myself because brujos are able to communicate and help lost spirits and then send them on their way. So he decides to try and find his cousin's spirit but accidentally summons a different spirit, one of a very cute boy who used to go to his high school. So when he does so he realizes that the spirit in question refuses to leave and that he cannot sever the ties uh, between that spirit and the world of the living and so that he's stuck with that other spirit. And then there's a little bit of a romance there and it's very cute and adorable but mostly the ending, that conclusion, it was just brilliant and it's a standalone which is rare and I think maybe that's why I loved it so much because because it's a standalone it had everything wrapped up by the end and no questions left, no, no cliffhanger or anything like that that makes you want for more. So it was absolutely perfect. The next book that I read was The Ravens as part of the same series. This was the third book that I read for this little video series and I rated it I think three stars. Yeah that's right, I rated this one three stars. So it's another YA contemporary fantasy novel. This one follows the adventures of two girls. So we have two POVs and it is actually written by two authors, Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. And both POVs are of these girls who are in university and joining the same sorority. One of them is already part of the sorority and they're called the Ravens, that, that is their nickname. But they're actually a front for a coven of witches. And the first girl, I think, Scarlet, Scarlet is already part of it already knows that she's a witch, she comes from a family of witches, knows everything about her legacy and her dream is to become the president of this sorority, so that's her goal. And then our new character, our new girl character is Vivi, she's just arrived, she wants to become part of the sorority, she has no idea that she has powers and that she's a witch and she's about to discover it all and Scarlet sees her and kind of thinks she's not really Ravens or Kappa material, so they kind of clash together but then they're put together when Vivi gets planned and Vivi becomes Scarlet's little sister. So they have to work together and there's some sort of evil at play as well from Scarlet's past actually, so they have to work together against them. I enjoyed it, it was okay, it was fast-paced enough and it was fun and entertaining, but there was a lot of issues I had, mostly with the characters. I thought a lot of them were quite flat, a little bit stereotypical, and there's a few love stories aspects in this book that just didn't do it for me. They were just very flat and kind of lifeless and just couldn't really see the sparks anywhere. So in that aspect it was okay and nothing more really. The next book that I read was The Project by Courtney Summers. So I read this at the same time as two of my friends as part of our little book club that we have going on and I enjoyed myself greatly reading it but they didn't so we had very different ratings by the end. This is also a YA novel but it's a YA thriller I guess or mystery uh, where we follow a main character called Lo, I forgot her name. Her name is Lo and her sister, when she was a kid, decided to join a cult called The Project. Lo wants to prove herself as a journalist because that's her job. She's 19, I think, so she's quite young, but she's, I guess, working as a PA in a journalist agency or something like that, in a small magazine agency. It's not very clear what it is, but that's her job. And so she decides to investigate the project and try and save her sister at the same time because she hasn't had contact from her in like a year or something. I can't remember. It's been a while. So she tries to investigate the project um, and its main character, I guess, its main 
main uh, leader is called uh, Lev, I think, Lev Warren. He's very charismatic and all that, and he's the one who lured Lo's sister in the first place and tries to lure Lo herself as well. There's a few problems with this book that I completely agree with, and I ended up rating it four stars, mostly based on my enjoyment of the book. I just thought it was super fast-paced. It was kind of fun to read. I was enjoying myself. I really wanted to know what was gonna happen next, so I kept flipping the pages, and I just didn't really want to put it down, which to me is the sign of a fun and entertaining book, and that's kind of all I want, really, very often in a book. I did put it through the co-pile system to see whether my rating was justified, and I think it is. I did enjoy the characters. I thought they were complex and had a lot of intricacies about them, and I enjoyed reading about them and wanted to know more and what was going to happen. I did think that the logic suffered a lot in this book, and that is the main reason, I think, why my friends rated it much lower. I think two and three stars, and I rated it four. So there's a few things that happened in the book that just happened very fast, and aren't logical at all. It just makes no sense, mostly because those passages in the book haven't taken enough time and weren't built up enough, so they kind of just suddenly happen and you're like, what? Really? That character would do that? But we weren't prepared for that character to do that. And it happens twice, so I'm not really gonna say exactly what it is that happens, but it was a bit strange. And I absolutely agree with the flows and faults that this book has. I just enjoyed myself reading it, so I wanted to rate it high for that reason. Okay, so the next book that I read was Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig, and this is a non-fiction book. It's quite short as well, it's only 264 pages, and the pages are very short themselves, so things are written quite big, and you have a lot of passages that look like this. So it, it goes quickly, but it is a non-fiction and therefore I didn't want to read it all at once, so I did take my time reading this book. It talks about Matt Haig, who, I mean, obviously he's the author and he's an author of fiction books as well, but it talks about his uh, struggles with depression and anxiety and how heavy it was around that time when he first realized that he had panic attacks and depression and all that. So. He wrote this book following his experience with this, and I just feel like if you yourself experience depression and anxiety, you might find this book very interesting, which I did. I thought it was very refreshing to see it from someone else's point of view, their own experience. Mine have been very different from his. His seemed to be very physical based, I want to say. Like a lot of his experiences were physical, like he couldn't breathe and things like that. I never had any physical symptoms from my depression and anxiety. It's always been more in my head, I really want to say, rather than in my body. But it's fascinating to read it from someone else's point of view and their own experience because everyone else is, is different. I feel like it's really hard to judge and rate a non-fiction book, especially one like this one, because it is so personal and it's about personal experience. But I just thought maybe a lot of people that I know had hyped it so much to me and said that they've they loved that book, that their this book really changed their perspective on things or helped them during a hard time or things like that. And I think for me it was maybe not the case anymore because I feel like a lot of my experience with mental health issues is mostly behind me. So although it was very interesting, maybe it was harder for me to to feel it as much as if I had read this book during the height of my personal experience with mental health issues. So yeah, I rated it four stars in the end, did enjoy myself reading it, did think it was very interesting and just a good insight into this person's life and experiences. Next, I read Born by Jeff Vandermeer. This is an adult sci-fi novel and I just love this cover. It's absolutely stunning. So this book is what I would qualify weird sci-fi. This author, Jeff Vandermeer, wrote the Annihilation trilogy, I think it's called something else, the Southern Reach trilogy, which uh, has its first book called Annihilation. And there was a movie that was made with uh, Natalie Portman and it was really good. I really enjoyed it personally. So he just is used to writing this type of genre that I think is just completely strange and weird sci-fi and I find very entertaining. So when I read this book, I uh, was kind of expecting it to be just as strange and weird as Annihilation, and it wasn't as much. I feel like this one has a lot more 
of a straightforward line of story I want to say like it just a lot of it makes more sense to me you get a lot more explanations by the end well I feel like when I read the trilogy for Annihilation by the end of it I was like I still have many many questions so many things were left unanswered in a way especially in terms of what was going on and the alien stuff and everything here it just felt like a little bit more straightforward and understandable just because we are in a post-apocalyptic world and you kind of just know the things you're gonna get an explanation on you do the things you don't you can kind of guess so it was a little bit less strange I think we follow the adventures of this girl called Rachel she lives in a post-apocalyptic world in a place called the city and the city is kind of ruled by two opposite factions we have on one side Mord that is a literal gigantic bear that can fly Yes, that's right. And on, on the other side, we have the Magician, which is a mysterious woman who's got factions of modified, technology modified children who are pretty much fucking monsters. So what happened in this world is that the company with a capital C created biotech and biotech is mostly like animals and things like that, like creatures who are robotic in nature, I guess, man-made and kind of extraordinary and weird in many ways. And when they did that, the world started to end and it was kind of the end of the world as we know it. And it slowly went into disrepair almost. It kind of feels like um, there's nothing much that people can do to live back the way we do currently in our actual world, but to embrace this new technology and to go along with it. So there's not exactly many jobs you can do in this world except hers, which is to be a scavenger. So that's what she does. And she scavengers mostly for this guy called Wick, who's not part of any factions and he used to be part of the company, but then rejected it when they started doing more fucked up things and left. Um, and she works with him. He also happens to be her lover and all that. And they have a relationship and everything. And then one day when she's out scavenging, she finds this plant-like thing that she ends up calling Born, which uh, she decides to raise. And as Born grows and grows, he starts being able to have uh, speech. He can speak to her, he grows massive, and he absorbs things. But as Wick mentions it, because he is distressful of Born, nothing comes out. He doesn't poop or anything. Nothing ever comes out. It's just, it gets absorbed by him and it stays there forever. <laughs> so. Bone is clearly some sort of strange biotech or whatever, but Rachel raises him like a son and grows a relationship with Bourne as if it was her own child. It's very strange, it's very fun, I enjoyed myself greatly, there's a lot of action in this book as well, and it's not as weird or hard to understand, I would say, as Annihilation, if you've read these, but I would also say that when I read this book, and any other book by Jeff Undermeyer, I feel like both a dumber and a smarter person. Dumber because there are so many words that sometimes I'm like, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but also smarter because I feel like, okay, I'm learning so much. This vocabulary that he uses is so rich. I just find his writing style to be the most perfect for me personally. I know that it might not be for everyone, but I think he writes so beautifully and that's kind of what pulls me in every time. I start reading and I'm like, I'm not sure about this story, this synopsis, but then I start reading the pages and I'm like, wow, this is so gorgeous writing. It's full of rich vocabulary. I love it. And I get like sucked in and can't stop reading. Next, I read Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman and this is a, an adult novel that is a contemporary book. So we follow the adventures of Eleanor Oliphant who is very strange because she's kind of very unaware of her social environment and of other people. She's a very... she acts in a way where she doesn't seem to understand social cues and what to do in society in general to get along with other people and get them to like you and that kind of stuff. So just she's kind of lonely, doesn't really have any friends. And we also know that she has kind of a strained relationship with her mother, who she has to phone every uh, Wednesday or something and talk to her every Wednesday, who seems to be locked away somewhere, either in prison or in a mental health facility, I guess. Not very clear which way, but it seems like her mother did something horrible to her when she was a child and is still talking to her like a horrible person nowadays. So Eleanor just has that terrible past and just continues to live her life 
not really acting like a normal person. And then one day, her and Raymond, a guy that she meets at work, happen to be on the street at the same time as this guy collapses and they decide to help him and take him to the hospital and follow up on him and kind of see what's going on with him and make sure that he's okay afterwards. And they kind of start forming a bond together. And so we discover a lot more about Eleanor and her relationship with her family and uh, how she interacts with other people kind of evolves as she gets further and further into this friendship with Raymond. And so, yeah, that's kind of the book. That's kind of the story. I would like to preface this by saying a lot of people have told me, and it is totally what they still think of this book, that it's hilarious. They think that the way that Eleanor is in society it's very funny because she doesn't care about the same stuff that we care about. She will just be like, oh, you know what? I've enjoyed myself in this concert, but that's it for me. So she just leaves. She does. She wouldn't stay just because that's the polite thing to do, for instance. So I totally understand this, but it's a very depressive book. A lot of the stuff that happens to her and that has happened in her past is extremely dark and sad and depressive and deep. So yeah, I didn't think it was a funny book at all. I just think it's mismarketed completely. Um, but that's just my opinion. I, I actually had a chat about this with one of my, my friends and she still thinks to this day, she's like, no, I do think that it's very funny because I thought her way of thinking was hilarious. But I was like, I thought it was interesting and intriguing and she kind of pissed me off in the first hundred pages and then I got used to her. But I never thought that it was funny. I just thought that it was kind of sad more than anything. So. That's it, you've been warned if you want to read this book. And I ended up reading it three stars. Finally, I read All Systems Read by Martha Wells, and this is part of the Murderbot Diaries. It's the first one, it's a novella, and uh, Martha Wells has written a bunch of novellas in the same series. This was such a fun novella to read. So this is high sci-fi, like proper sci-fi in space, etc. We're following an android, a sec unit android, as in like a security type of android that's uh, helping this team, which is led by Dr. Mensa. And the team of people that uh, the android is helping are scientists and they're on a planet to explore it and I guess do research. And then some shit happens where they discover that the other team that's on the planet that has, you know, they're doing their own stuff and their own research and everything, Every single one of them has died, an accident has happened, so they decide to go and explore and see what's going on. And our main character, which is the android, is calling itself Murderbot and has hacked its own governor module, so it's the system that governs it and can do whatever it wants. It doesn't need to obey orders anymore, but it chooses to help the team anyway. It's not like trying to kill them or anything, even though it calls itself Murderbot due to its dark past, that's it. And it kind of, it just wants to be left alone. It's very antisocial, a little bit like Eleanor Oliphant, so the last book before this one that I read, where it's just, it doesn't like people, not because it hates them, but just because it's very shy and doesn't want to talk to people, just wants to watch the entertainment that it has downloaded, which is mostly TV shows, and that's it. That's all it wants to do all day long. But then it does end up liking the people that it's working with and wants to help them somehow. So it is working alongside with them. And it, it was just such cute and fun and just entertaining and action-packed story. Really, really enjoyed it and definitely want to pick up the next novellas in this series. Okay, that's it. So I read a total of seven books and I'm pretty proud because I didn't think I was reading this much recently. So I feel like seven books is quite a lot especially since this is the first month in a while that I haven't really DNF'd any books, so I'm pretty happy with myself. And that's it! I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like down below, leave a comment, I always respond. Consider subscribing, ringing that bell, all that jazz, and I will see you guys in the next one.